direction towards democracy. But it's clear from these protests that many people don't feel their needs are being met. Uh, seven years on, do they feel they've been betrayed? Uh, some do. The, the, one of the movements uh, coordinating the recent protests is called uh, Feshnistinna, which means what are we waiting for? Uh, and they've been told uh, repeatedly by the president, including in his speech yesterday, uh, to be patient. Uh, and uh, their patience has run out. So for the uh, protesters in the remote areas and now in the capital, uh, their needs have not been met. They're waiting for what we sometimes call a revolutionary dividend, which has not appeared. Uh, certainly not jobs, certainly not a lot of development or improved services. So there's a lot of frustration. That's what's being uh, expressed on the anniversary of the revolution. And uh, will these latest measures that we've heard from the government to uh, increase aid and health care to some of society's poorest be able to do something to placate uh, those protesters? Uh, probably not. Uh, maybe on the margins a little bit. Um, certainly, uh, it helps keep the governing coalition together. Right now, Tunisia's government's being run under what's called the Carthage Pact, Pact since the summer of 2016. And most of the opposition has been has sort of joined the government to have a unified position, which is increasingly estranging the political parties from the street. Um, and so it does serve a role uh, also with the Tunisian labor movement uh, to placate some of the political, the organized political forces. But I think it will do little to placate the street because uh, very little is being done to address the fundamental economic issues which are plagued, plaguing Tunisia. Uh, all that said, though, these protests have been relatively small, hundreds of people uh, on the streets today. Does that suggest that most Tunisians are quite happy uh, with state of, the state of affairs in the country? Are they hopeful for what comes next? No, Tunisians are uh, more pessimistic than you might expect of following the Arab Spring's most successful outcome. And polling data indicates that the vast majority of Tunisians think Tunisia is on the wrong path uh, and that its uh, economy is getting worse. Um, so uh, most of the public uh, agrees with the, the protesters. They're just not out. And one of the reasons is that the government has been very effective in squashing the protests with uh, 800 arrests. Uh, including arrests of people for just handing out pamphlets, which is a new thing in Tunisia, uh, considering you know the revolutionary gains around uh, freedom of expression, even that's being squashed. Uh, and they, they've created a, a narrative in the Tunisian press about how um, the, the protesters are looters and criminals and disruptive. Uh, and there's some sympathy that, for that among the wider Tunisian public. Uh, certainly, most Tunisians would prefer pacific rather than violent uh, responses uh, to government policies. Uh, but no, uh, most Tunisians aren't buying uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the government's policies or the government line, uh, uh, and they've lost faith to a large degree in the current political system and the political parties. Okay, Professor William Lawrence from George Washington University, thank you very much for coming onto the program this evening. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani has declared the landmark nuclear deal a victory for his country.